Hello everyone, this is Kadir. Welcome to my Mindtracy YouTube channel. I am going to talk about user experience and user research analysis. User experience is the aware of fields about using a product, system or services. It is generally donated by some form of human-computer interaction. This is abbreviated as events. Every interaction someone with the product works on experience. And each and every interaction user will have some experience. They have own feelings, desires, thoughts and goals ultimately when they use some things. If you want to know specific experience, you have a specific person who mostly using your products. When you look at your products, we look at entire aspects of marketing, branding, positioning, the flow of use. When you realize there is number of things to cover and around the product that we got effect. The output will create user experience and usability of user. The usability methods we want to incorporate and understanding human psychology and human behavior into the product and the services that we create. Finally, it is important to focus on the people who are going to use our power system. Good user interface can have a tremendous impact on both individual stability and the accomplished tasks. Fixing these problems requires following the user process to understand user method model and feedback. Usury process The goal of user-centered analysis is to collect and analyze data to make informed user interface design. User research focuses on understanding user's behavior, needs and motivations through user research methodologies. To understand what our users need, feelings and feedback, we first have to get at a sense of who they are. The field of user research is devoted to collecting the data needed to develop that understanding. Some research methods of data gathering such as user interviews, focus groups, surveys are best suited for gathering information about the general attitudes and perception of your users. Other research methods such as user testers like user observation, contextual inquiry or field studies are more appropriate for understanding specific aspects of user behavior and interaction with your product and services. A primary goal of user-centered analysis is to collect data on and understand the user's mental models. User-centered analysis will should focus effectiveness. Can user achieve what they need? Ease of learning operation can be learned by ob observing the object. Efficiency. How fast can user complete the task? Memorable. Can users remember enough to reuse satisfaction how much do users like use the product next i am going to talk about a strategy it's a business goal strategy it it brings clarity on business objective and abstracts going to be solid ideas should be more concrete abstract with a start and a strategy it's really important for concrete design the goal, the purpose, the big why, we need to ask ourselves and find answers for what do we want to get out of this product or service? What do our users to get out of from our products? By answering the first question, we will have 
business objectives the second question addresses user needs business objectives and user needs form the strategy plan the foundation for every decision making process in your user experience strategy design drives innovation it is powers brands and build loyalty that loyalty retains users in the strategy plan we describe about business and product goals target users user needs success metrics the strategy plan helps to bring all goals to see everyone and allows goals priority and scope to be discussed it communicates positive message to team including others point of view and concerns we may reuse previous works and guidelines templates so that avoid rework and follow default form instead of reinventing the everything so that design should be efficiency design strategy is to bring out information on the company strengths weakness opportunities and threats called a sword analysis this is common business analysis technique and one way to discuss about a company's position in the market here we can use this time to discuss the company's competition as well this design strategy solidify your business objectives from use objectives and it makes easy to understand and distinct and measurable our business objectives so strategy makes objective concrete some of user research methods i am going to talk about here the methods are user interviews personas contextual interview user observation focus groups cost sorting and task analysis surveys the first one is user interviews is one on one direct interview with users so how you particular user works and we understand user feelings and feedback from previous experience we will ask them about their experience directly the first step in setting of an interview is deciding who it is that you are going to interview it may seem obvious but the most important thing is to get people who are representative of the target user of your product who are the people who are going to be using your product user interviews gives opportunity to talk to them so now they may be current users of your similar product and services if you are creating a better something you will likely to find current users and you will want to learn user attitudes and behaviors and desires what they care about and what problems they see they might also be a non users or extreme users we need to find real users and may not be exact real because our target user group may diverse we need to find and choose user segmentation and choose user next one is the personas a representative user based on available data and user interviews it helps to gather user insights on our product persona is a create from those insights who are abstract users who represent what you found when you went out and looked at the real users so your yeah, persona is a model of person they are not any one human being so your persona is going to include demographic information and also their motivation why do they want to use the system that you are creating 
Identify one user group as your target audience, which user group to focus on your business decision. They may be current users, or missing users, most frequent users. So group with great number of users, highest individual value to company. For each user group, we need to create three profiles. One is the user profile, second one is the task profile, third one is the environmental profile. To make these questions real, it's nicer to have a picture or a photo. In fact, you can use stack photography. Make sure to give your personas a name, give them an occupation and a background. They should have some hopes and dreams. Give them a story to tell. By knowing what your persona thinks and does and feels, it helps you build empathy. It helps you understand the status of mind, the emotions, the philosophy, the beliefs, the point of view of that user. Next, I am going to talk contextual interviews is an one-on-one -on -one user research method which gives opportunity to the observe user in the natural environment. During these interviews, researchers watch and listen as users work in the user's own environment and better understanding of the use, way users work. These interviews tend to be more natural and sometimes more realistic as a result. They are also usually less formal than lab tests and don't use taskers or scripts. We will be observing in natural way the users working and thinking. The contextual interview can be combined with usability testing as well. Usability testing Identify user frustration and problems with your side through one-on-one -on -one sessions where a real-life user performs takes on your site. The user observation is observing people to discover their needs and goals and values. It's an effective way of finding users' insights on an existing problem or need. Observing people can also help you build empathy and think from their point of view. Great designs emerge through all sorts of approaches. That's why it's often good strategy to watch someone doing and can understand their feedbacks, feelings and frustration in a natural way that you can observe a lot just by watching. Of course, the observing people isn't the only way to begin designing an effective user interface. We may combine with other user research methods, example user interview. Sometimes user tests work with a finished product either in a preparation for a redesign or to root out any usability issues before launch. In other cases, user can test your work in progress or even a rough prototype of the finished product. Next one is focus group. This is a brainstorming moderated discussion with a group of users, allowing you to learn about user attitudes, ideas, and the desires towards a product or service. This would be conducted by trained user experience specialists. Participants are product target users who are recruited on the basis of similar demographics psychographics, buying attitudes or behaviors. Next one the task analysis is the method analysis of the task from user's perspective. It involves understanding of both user goals and attitudes for our product. The idea behind the task analysis is that every user interacts with your product takes place in the context of some task that the user is performing. Sometimes the task is focused on particular goal such as buying a product and sometimes broader. Task analysis is a method of closely examining the precise steps user go through in accomplishing 
those tasks. This examination can be done either through interviews in which you get users to tell you stories about their experience or through direct observation in the field, studying the users in their natural habitat. Goal of task analysis. The task analysis of the current task is task redesign to define, improve the future of design, navigation design, etc. In task analysis, we mean dictate some problems, example unnecessary steps, unnecessary complexity, redundant activities, bottlenecks, for function allocation, for distribution of skills, for job enrichment. Some of additional user research methods I am going to discuss here. In addition to participant observation and structured interviews, there are other ways that you can forage for design insights. Interviews are hard for some reasons. In effective solution in place like this is for the participant to do their capturing themselves. So we may use some other methods like diary studies, experience sampling, survey, In diary studies, you give people a diary that complete at a specific time or interval. For example, for evening or every meal. In general, diary studies are used to record a specific piece of information like how happy you feel with the products or what are the things you ate. One of the appealing features of diary studies is that they can scale a lot better than direct observation. With your diary study, you are only limited by the amount of materials that you can give out or that you can aggregate later on. The most important piece of design for creating an effective diary study is to have the entry be as frictionless as possible. The next one is experience sampling. Experience sampling method is a research methodology that asks participants to stop at certain times and makes notes of their experience in real time. The point is for them to record temporal things like feelings while in the moment. Right then or not later, right there, not elsewhere. This method aggregating information across lots of people like other times of day that make people more or less happy. It is easiest for you as the researcher if this information can be filled in some digital form like a survey or so it can be automatically aggregated. Surveys. Surveys research is often used to collect user opinions and feelings on our product and services. Survey research can be specific or widespread goals. It defines product and services. Today, survey research is used by a variety of different groups. There are four main methods of survey research. The one is male surveys. The next one is in-person interview, other uh, one is uh, telephone interviews and internet surveys. By above methods, find out what are the major decision points or area of uncertainty in the thinking of the design team with a regard to the usage of the product. Focus on those areas and find out what needs to be discovered. In user experience design, I am going to talk about the structure of the product or design. In structure of the layout, I am going to talk about the information architecture. It focuses on organizing, structuring and labeling content in an effective and sustainable way. The goal is to help users find information and complete tasks. 
To do this, you need to understand how the pieces fit together to create a larger feature. How items relate to each other within the system. Why a well thought out IU structure design? According to Peter's Murray, the purpose of your IE is to help users understand where they are, what they have found, and what's around and what's to expect. As a result, your IE informs content strategy through identifying word size as well as informing user interface design. An interaction design through playing a role in the wireframing and prototyping process. The main components of IA, organization schemes and structures, how you categorize and structure information, labeling systems, how you represent information, navigation systems, how users browse or move through information, search systems, how users look for information. In information design, the cost sorting involves a major role. The cost sorting is one method used to explore how users categorize or group information elements the way users think. Next, I am going to talk about product surface. Your wireframe, also known as a page schematic or screen blueprint, where wireframes are created for the purpose of arranging elements to best accomplish a particular purpose. The purpose is usually being informed by a business objective and a creative idea. The wireframes depicts the page layout or arrangement of the website content including interface elements and navigational systems and how they work together. Wireframes can be pencil drawings or sketches on a whiteboard or they can be produced by means of a broad array of free or commercial software applications. The value of wireframes. Wireframes serve multiple purposes by helping to connect the site information architecture to its visual design by showing pause between pages. Clarify consistent ways for displaying particular types of information on the user interface. Determine intended functionality in the interface. Prioritize content through the determination of how much space to allocate to a given item and where that can item is located. Types of wireframes. Wireframes can usually have two types based on the way of representing. Low fidelity wireframes help facilitate communicates our ideas to stakeholder in quick time. It is easy to modify and iterate based on your user feedback. They tend to be more abstract because they often use simple images to block off face and implement more content. High fidelity wireframes are better for affordance test because of their increased level of detail. These wireframes often include information about each particular item on the page, including dimensions, color, behavior, and or accents related to interactive and element. Next, I am going to talk about the detailed design. Detailed design of the system is the loss activity before implementing begins. The oddest design problems must be addressed by the detailed design or the design is not complete. The detailed design is still an abstraction as compared to source code, but it should be detailed enough to ensure that translation to source is a precise mapping instead of a rough interpretation. As mentioned on the interface design, many of the examples will be scoped to a particular part of the overall system under development. Detailed design, detailed design artifacts are going to contain a large amount of details which if included in full would obscure the point of, of this page. 
By using a variety of views, different parts of the system can be made clear by different views. Some of views are better at elaborating systems, states where other views are better at showing how data flows within the system. Other views are better at showing how different system entities relate to each other through class tax taxonomies for systems that are designed using an object-oriented approach. I hope you have learned about user experience and best practices. If you have any doubts and queries, please write me at the help at mygestate.com. Thanks for watching my channel. I will see you next time.